Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday, first annual and youth month celebration. Live at Urban Panty Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to 11. Featuring Stella Moana, Swift Beagle, Tandy Sonia, Shinelli Green, Junior Mambaso, Tammy Jali, Selena Africa, Priscilla, and more. The MC will be due. FM. Presenter, Presenter Max Shepard, Diverse TV. Let's celebrate. Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday, first annual and youth month celebration. Live at Urban Panty Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to 11. Featured. Tandy Sonia, Shinelli Green, Junior Mambaso, Tammy Jali, Selena Africa, Priscilla, and more. The MC will be due from Inanda FM. Presenter Max Shepard, Diverse TV. Let's celebrate our youth. Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday. First annual and youth month celebration. Live at Urban Panty Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to 11. Featuring Stella Goana, Swift Beagle, Tandy Sonia, Shinelli Green, Junior Mambaso, Tammy Jali, Selena Africa, Priscilla, and more. The MC will be due from Inanda FM. Presenter Max Shepard, Diverse TV. Let's celebrate. Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday, first annual and youth month celebration. Live at Urban Panty Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to 11. Featuring Stella Goana, Swift Beagle, Tandy Sonia, Shinelli Green, Junior Mambaso, Tammy Jali, Selena Africa, Priscilla, and more. The MC will be due to from Inanda FM. Presenter Max Shepard, Diverse TV. Let's celebrate our youth. Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday, first annual and youth month celebration. Live at Urban Panty Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to 11. Featuring Stella Goana, Swift Beagle, Tandy Sonia, Shinelli Green, Junior Mambaso, Tammy Jali, Selena Africa, Priscilla, and more. The MC will be due from Inanda FM. Presenter Max Shepard, Diverse TV. Let's celebrate our youth. Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday, first annual and youth month celebration. Live at Urban Panty Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to 11. Featuring Stella Goana, Swift Beagle, Tandy Sonia, Shinelli Green, Junior Mambaso, Tammy Jali, Selena Africa, Priscilla, and more. The MC will be due from Inanda FM. Presenter Max Shepard, Diverse TV. Let's celebrate. Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday, first annual and youth month celebration. Live at Urban Panty Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to 11. Featuring Stella Goana, Swift Beagle, Tandy Sonia, Shinelli Green, Junior Mambaso, Tammy Jali, Selena Africa, Priscilla, and more. The MC will be due to from Inanda FM. Presenter Max Shepard, Diverse TV. Let's celebrate our youth. 
Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday, first annual and youth month celebration. Live at Durban Country Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to late. Featured. Stella Goana. Swift Big. Tandy Sonny. Shinelli Green. Junior Mambaso. Tammy Jan. Selena Africa. Priscilla. And more. The MC will be due. From Inanda FM. Presenter. Max Shepard. Diverse TV. Let's celebrate. Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday, first annual and youth month celebration. Live at Durban Country Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to late. Featured. Stella Goana. Swift Big. Tandy Sonny. Shinelli Green. Junior Mambaso. Tammy Jan. Selena Africa. Priscilla. And more. The MC will be due. From Inanda FM. Presenter. Max Shepard. Diverse TV. Let's celebrate our youth. Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday. First annual and youth month celebration. Live at Durban Country Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to late. Featured. Featured. Stella Goana. Swift Big. Tandy Sonny. Shinelli Green. Green. Junior Mambaso. Tammy Jan. Selena Africa. Priscilla. And, and more. The MC will be due. due. From Inanda FM. Presenter. Max Shepard. Diverse TV. Let's celebrate our youth. Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday, first annual and youth month celebration. Live at Durban Country Museum. 12th of June, 2021. 11 a.m. to late. Featured. Stella Goana. Swift Big. Tandy Sonny. Shinelli Green. Junior Mambaso. Tammy Jan. Selena Africa. Priscilla. And more. The MC will be due. From Inanda FM. Presenter. Max Shepard. Diverse TV. Let's celebrate. Yeah, happy anniversary. This is such a great platform. The Global Sunday, first annual and youth month celebration. Hi everyone, this is DJ Catafold. I'm sorry I couldn't make it to the gig. Hence, I'm recording live from Johannesburg. Sala Catafold. It's DJ Catafold.
Yes, 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 that was DJ Cartafont in the building. Poo, 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 poo. Welcome to the Global Sunday Show. I am your boy, Lungani Kuala, a.k.a. Chocolate Kid. Leo! Oh, man, 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 you know what? I have a lot of things to say today. Um, and I have a huge surprise for you guys. I mean, not just one surprise, but a lot of surprises. Because, um, yeah, I'm going to be talking to people on the phone, over the phone. And, um, yeah, the huge surprise is... Okay, that's not a huge, huge surprise. I have a huge surprise that is about to come. But um, one of the surprises is that today is my birthday. Happy birthday, boy! <laughs> so, yeah, today this crazy ass punk was born. All right? So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can see people are clapping. Thank you, thank you so much. I see, I see you. I see you in India. Thank you, thank you so much. I, I see you in, uh, in Africa, in South Africa. I see you. I, I see, I see all of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wow, what a weekend, what a weekend. Um, I'm, st- I'm still trying to recover um, from the weekend that I had. Um, you know, it's yesterday was amazing. Um, you know, uh, I can't even remember the days. I woke up this morning and <laughs> actually I didn't wake up. My dad woke me up this morning and he was, uh, um, he was like, hey, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, what day is it today? <laughs> and he said, <laughs> and he said, it's a Sunday. <gasps> and I'm like, what time is it? And he said, um, it's 8.30 a.m. I was like, oh, okay, I still have some time to prepare for the show, but <laughs> I thought I missed the show. <laughs> but um, yeah, happy birthday to me and enjoy my birthday. All of you who are watching, please enjoy my birthday. Um, I see Vusi Zwane is sending um, uh, a message on Facebook and he's saying, happy birthday, my leader. Um, Pepe, um, Ngufisela, Unwele, Olude, Mpilwe, Niako. Yonke. Oh, 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 gupumelele, oh, gufisai. Oh, wow. May your dreams come true. That's what he's saying Um, when I translate to English. That is Uvusi Zwane. Please do drop me a comment on Facebook and also do drop me a comment Um. On, on YouTube. We are live on YouTube. We are live on Facebook as well. Oh, it is so amazing. And also you can drop me a message on WhatsApp uh, plus two seven seven nine six seven three four zero seven seven. If you want to be uh, one of the people who want to be calling in today, please do send me a text on that WhatsApp number. It's only going to be a WhatsApp number wherever you are all around the world. You can be able to text me on WhatsApp and I will give you a call and you can say whatever you want to say. If you want to say, hey, you man, you can say it's fine. If you want to say happy birthday, that's fine too. You know, if you want to tell me how is your day going, that's fine too. But um, yeah, before I talk too much, because, um, you know, they call me loudspeaker, um, I just want to appreciate and, and acknowledge people who were performing yesterday at the show, the first anniversary of the Global Sunday. Um, you know what? Um, that that show was more spiritual than anything else. It was more spiritual. I am so glad and i'm so excited to have people like you guys who were performing there you guys who made the show possible you guys who attended event you guys who watched online and who you guys who shared and commented i mean i am so grateful that i am only attracting positive energy nothing else but just positive energy i don't know what i did and i've been asking myself for the past 48 hours like what did i do to deserve these amazing people Anytime I send a text, they respond immediately and they say, you know what, whatever you're asking for, I can do it. I can do it. When, when, when do you, it's so amazing. It is so amazing. It's unbelievable. And, you know, it's so, un, it's unbelievable in such a way that I always feel that 
it might just vanish in a day because I don't know where it comes from. I don't know what I did. I don't know why I deserve this such honor and this such privilege. So to all of you guys, I love you so much. I appreciate you. You make a huge, huge impact in my life, you know. So I always try to expand that and extend that to people who do not receive the same love that I receive from you guys. So it's really amazing. So, so yeah, let me just uh, um, acknowledge and appreciate people who um, uh, were part of the show uh, yesterday. Yeah, I, I got a lot of calls yesterday, people appreciating in tears. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Anyways, I'm not going to talk about that now. Maybe um, it might be one of the questions from uh, um, from our panelists today. Our panelists today are a surprise, okay? <laughs> so it's going to be, that's the second surprise. Like I said I have a, a first surprise, which is not a huge surprise that it's my birthday today. But the second surprise is that I have, you know, surprise panelist for today all right so only two people only two people the rest they are, they are drunk they've been drinking the whole you know the whole weekend because it was my birthday and it was the anniversary a lot of things going on so they are drunk i called them i was like hey they're like, ah, get the fuck out of here you know <laughs> like okay okay get some rest okay get some rest it's a joke it's a joke it's a joke if you guys are watching <laughs> but you probably you know sleeping from um getting drunk yesterday <laughs> Um, yes, so I would like to acknowledge and say thank you to um, Mr. Mwanza, um, uh for making the show possible yesterday. Um, Kura, mo, 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 Kura, I'll just say Kura. Um, and then uh, Mr. John Ramawoda. And then also uh, Mr. Paul Mekula, who gave us venue on last minute. On last minute, he was saying, you guys are welcome. And you guys, I want you guys to do more more events on this venue this venue is about africa this venue has history of africa that people do not know about he took us on a tour yesterday if you were watching um if you do want to watch just go to our youtube channel and watch what, has, what was happening yesterday it was so amazing he took us on a tour and he explained a lot of things in which i am from south africa and some of the things and most of the things i did not know about that was amazing shout out to you mr paul mekula mekula um, Pansy Museum. If you want to go to Pansy Museum, um, it's based there uh, at Umbilo. At Umbilo. If you Google Pansy Museum, you will definitely um, find them. Or if you can't spell the 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 word Pansy, you can just Google um, uh, the Global Sunday anniversary or first anniversary show then everything will be there you can google that the youtube the youtube will pop up the, the facebook will pop up and the detail will pop up oh what an amazing uh day we had yesterday and then um uh, shout out to um bongi wem so me aka miss classic she was there uh she's amazing uh, the queen of global sunday uh shout out to max shepard who was our presenter um shout out to Dude, dude, MC dude, shout out to you, my brother. You were this the saver of the day. You are so amazing, man. I'm looking forward to working with you um in the upcoming events. Uh um dude is from Inanda FM. He's a, a producer for one of the shows called Hood Up at Inanda FM, and it, it is in partner uh in partner with uh, the global sunday so there's a lot of things coming up um if you are a rapper look out for that show look out for the show if you are an american rapper south african rapper you know what look out for that show because it, it's it's an it's an amazing show shout out to you dude my brother um shout out to dj katafon who just performed right now shout out to zulu pavarotti i uh, went to the mago fontaine academy of Bal uh, no uh, uh, um, secondary school actually <laughs> um yeah shout out to the schoolmate um shout out to Lindsay l uh shout out shout out to strew 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 shout out to you my brother shout out to Depp and vrg he's gonna be calling in today we're gonna be talking to him he said i want to send you a shout out a birthday um um a shout out uh shout out to zz kingston shout out to natim te boo shout out to uh tito dandy that's my brother right there from durban south africa he has released something new uh if you want to check him out check him out on facebook tito dandy t-i um d-o-d-a-n-d-y tito dandy uh, shout out to andy h latter shout out to you my brother sending my love to you 
Uh, shout out to Stello Kowan. Stello Kowan was like one of the main artists that we had on the show yesterday. Uh, shout out to you, my brother. He sang um, on my uh, father's funeral a few a few years ago. It was so it was so amazing. He's a good singer. Uh, follow him on on social media accounts. You can find his music from all the social media platform and the music platform. I don't know what it's what it's called. I'm not a musician, but uh, you you can just search Stello Kowan. S uh, S C E L O G O W A and east Kelokowane. um quickly shout out to mi academy who um um it's an academy that is owned by um oh mr Mwandla. Uh, they were performing yesterday and they made the show possible which is really amazing shout out to shine lee greens she's all the all the way from eswatini in, in in south africa shout out to you baby girl um you've been part of the show since the show started we really appreciate you we love you swift beagle uh shout out to you my brother he's all the way from johannesburg but he was born in durban uh shout out to you you made the show insane bro you you are amazing he he just got signed in um um one of the um studios here in america um um it, that has you know like really top artists from here in america like really known top artists he just got signed shout out to you and congratulations for your um for your contracts my brother uh, we appreciate you. Shout out to Tandy Sony. Tandy Sony. I saw you receiving a certification yesterday. Are uh, you amazing lady? Thank you so much. The Rooted Twins. Shout out to you. Um, Priscillion, my brother. Shout out to you. We, we have a lot of projects coming up. Um, Junior Mambazo. Oh my God. You should know Junior Mambazo. Check them on YouTube. They have, um, they, they are featured on the movie called, oh, what is it called? It's a, an American movie, Blending, Blending with Terry Tom Cruise and uh, a lot of top stars. Um, we had them on the show previously. Check that show. Just Google Junior Mambazo. Um, you'll find them. If you don't know how to spell Mambazo, just say M A M A M B A Z O. Junior Mambazo. Um, Tommy Jolly, a legendary from um, uh, South Africa and Claremont. Shout out to you. Um, uh, DJ. Um, who was um, um, DJ Music, who was um, taking care of the show um, yesterday. Uh, shout out to you. Thank you so much. And yeah, yeah. Shout out to Usigo Organization. Shout out to Pansy Museum, MI Academy. Shout out to uh, CSI Photography. Mubego, um, boom, boom, you punk ass. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, yeah. And, and shout out to Diverse TV. You know what? I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. If if I didn't send you a shout out, that's a huge mistake. Send me a WhatsApp right now. We'll give you a call. We're going to talk to you over the phone. But let me go straight to it. Let me reveal my panelist for today. Let me reveal my panelist for today. And today is all about me, guys. My birthday. They're going to be interviewing me. They will be asking me questions. Whatever I can answer, I will answer. Whatever I cannot answer, I will say, do. <laughs> and I will not answer. <laughs> and in three, two, one, welcome Damon Easton and Mr. London in the building. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Oh man, I don't have energy anymore. Let me just pass it over to you guys. <laughs> Take over. Longani, please. Longani, happy birthday. You know, yesterday, um, I uh, people have no idea the amount of energy it takes to have pulled off a year of consistent programming with COVID, with all kinds of technical things, with the switch over from G 4G to 5G or G4 to G5, I don't know which comes first. <laughs> I know our president said the G7, but I don't think that's an electronic thing. Um, at any rate, um, you know, watching you do this show and also you know, just that, that you said a year ago, do you mind if I use a corner of the living room mm -hmm. to do something? And I'm like, sure, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and look at what it is. Uh, anyway, it's so wonderful to be here. And also Damon, Damon, Damon. I've known Damon for at least 15 years, haven't I? Yeah. How yeah. Long? Something like that. Damon is as uh, up and coming and arrived star here um anyway it's so good to have you back on the show that's wonderful um so damon how was your week that it ended here on this show on lungani's birthday good it's day. a great week and it's a better weekend 
uh, yeah, this is great. This is, this is awesome. And it was great to, to play on the show yesterday as well. Um, it's an honor to be asked to do both. And um, I'm really glad to be back. We, I, I came in and was the, the first in-studio guest back in October when I stayed with you for a while. And um, that was that was super fun to do. And Lungani was so kind to have me on and play my music. And that was for my birthday, actually. That's right. That's right. My oh, birth- yes. <laughs> now, your birthday. So it's actually very fitting. I only just thought of that. Um, and I want to I wanna just do, do a little something. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dylan Gani. Happy birthday to you. Wow. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much. I think we should call you birthday boy because, <laughs> by the way, you, um, you, you were the first person you were the first guest to be at the studio at the global sunday studio you were the first guest so you um uh you broke a record so whenever they talk about the global sunday in the future where we when we have when covid is done and we having people traveling to come here at the show um you know you will be the first person that appeared physically at the studio um to be the global sunday guest so um you know congratulations to you you are so amazing and i, I think we should call you the birthday boy because there was two birthdays on that day when you were at the studio and today it's my birthday so like <laughs> yeah i mean okay you guys take over i don't want to talk too much <laughs> so damon are you ready we have a list of questions mm-hmm. for the birthday boy all right all right you ready? You're all pumped up. You got your gloves on. You're ready to go to battle here. Okay. So <laughs> the first question that I'm going to ask is, oh, I'll take out the hell and the, uh, uh, what, what made you start the global Sundays? Oh, wow. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, thank you so much uh, for the question. Um, <clears throat> next time, I think it would be fair to have the questions before the show. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, great questions. Uh, great question. Um, the reason why I started the show um, is because I wanted to bridge the gap uh, between the legendary uh, artists and the upcoming artists and the well-known, the current well-known artist in which it depends um, what time of the year is because they, they, they fluctuate all the time, you know, this year we have this person as a famous artist and this year we have another one so um if you are a famous artist and it's so hard for you to get in connected with your fans or the people that looks that looks up to you um this is a platform for you where you can be able to engage um with, with your with your audience and share your story um because most of the time and most of the platforms that are there you only get like you know like five minutes ten minutes to to you know to talk about your your life, to talk about your journey, to talk about your experience, and here at the Global Sunday, we 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 give people a platform, you know, to express themselves from from the day when they started doing what whatever that they are doing. If it's music, if it's dance, if it's whatever that they are doing, you know, they they get to express themselves and and exchange and and, and share that with the public, with the people who are watching and having people to comment. And ask questions, you know, and give a direction to the upcoming people, the upcoming artists, the the the, the people who are, are lost and want to get a direction, you know, and people who have been asking themselves, how did Damon get to that level? You know, we get to answer those questions when people are watching live. That's 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 the most amazing thing about this show is that everything happens live. Everything happens live. Most of the shows they do a pre-record. Um, except for the news, you know, but everything here happens live. You know, we have live audience, we have live people who are not robotic, you know, Damon, you know, he's smiling right now. Um, you know, Mr. Laden, he's, you know, confused right now, but everything happens live. That's what I love, I love about the show. And then also 
you know, to give people a voice, you know, to give people a voice. The people that want to share their experience, but they don't have a platform. This is the platform for them. You know, I thought about that. And uh, like I said previously on the previous show that I'm a people's person. I consider myself as a people person because I click to, I click with everybody. Everybody that con connects with me, they feel like we've met before or we have lived in a different or a, a previous life. But, you know, we always click. And I want to stay in contact with those amazing people. I want to, you know, always communicate with them. So I started the show because of that. Um, I, I believe I've answered the question before I, I talk until I until the time is, 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 is done. Thank you. So, okay, Damon, it's up to you here. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, you just had the big show, the annual. How did it feel the first to host the first annual The Global Sunday Show? Woo! Okay, yeah, that was a big one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, it was the first annual. Um, it, it felt like I was turning. It felt like I was turning my first year. It felt like I was a baby, and I was receiving this warm love from people all over the world. It was so amazing. Like I said, um, I, I've been thinking about this for the past forty-eight hours before even the event. I was asking myself, what did I do? I mean, Mr. Laden, you know, I've been saying this to you. And I was like, I don't know what happened, but the appreciation that I receive from people who are part of the show, it's so amazing. It's like I, I, it's like I pay them like millions of dollars, the way that they appreciate me and they acknowledge me. And you, 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 you know, uh, Mr. Laden, how hectic it was during the preparation of the show. There was like thousands and thousands of um, challenges that we, 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 we came across, obstacles, like serious obstacles that we came across. Most of the things were, um, were confirmed the two days before the show uh, because of a lot of problems that we came across in which I'm not going to uh, mention here because it's going to sound like I'm insulting some other people, but it was amazing. It, it felt like I was a baby and I'm having this love from different brothers and sisters who are family members hugging me and saying you are doing an amazing job and i was like oh, what job are you talking about because you guys are doing an amazing job so it was so amazing even today i did send a message um to the south african team uh that was part of the event saying thank you thank you so much um as artists this is your platform anytime you need to spread the word anytime you need to say something in the public um you are always welcome on the global sunday show so yeah that's that that's what it felt like it was so amazing something that words cannot describe so thank you for the question uh damon you know one of the things that was going on yesterday and the, and the week leading up to that anniversary show was a great deal of uncertainty because of the the new double variant of the virus because of problems with um uh, the uh, distribution of vaccines to South Africa was supposed to have been done by the Indian company that they had to pull their vaccines and and distribute them inside of India. The ones that they had promised to South Africa, um, there was a promise of uh, financial aid to South Africa from a group of European nations that got held up. People in, in South Africa were not being vaccinated. Um, and then the COVID spike came, and this is all in the days leading up to it. We did not know what was going to be possible, what level it was going to be at. Could there be a live performance? Could there not? There were many, many voices on both sides of that argument. Mm. Um, there were, you know, um, Lungani talked about the, you know, the, the million, you know, multi-million dollar product that this show is that has been done completely voluntarily um including major artists major artists who do not appear unless their management approves who are willing were willing to purchase their fair travel and their you know lodging in durban to come to do this show and so you have to think about them um, at one point when we thought we might have to cancel the show, I even reached out to some of the financial resources that back what I do to see that if we could guarantee if the show is canceled or postponed, that we could reimburse those artists the, the money that they put out and then 
when we do do it, whatever date it is, if their tickets aren't transferable, to buy them tickets so that they can come again. You know, this was all going on. And then there were all of the technical things. And um, I, I just, I don't know, it's magical what happened. It, yes, it was because of you, Lungani, but also I've known since you were a little boy that, that you know, the, the finger of something spiritual touched you when you were born because things, you know, can collect uh, like light and good stuff sticks to you. It's incredible. Yeah. But I wanted to ask a, a serious question about this, about the show itself here, not yesterday's anniversary, but the Global Sunday. We were here, we were stuck inside. We had been stuck inside when you started the show last year, we'd already been in this house for months. Mm. If there hadn't been COVID, would there have been a Global Sunday show? Um, <clears throat> uh, thank you, thank you so much for the question. Um, the, the answer is yes, um, but just to elaborate, um, the show was before the show started like you know um to to be live on facebook and 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 um and all the other platforms um i was already you know um interviewing different people different artists or from you know only in south africa obviously because i i didn't have um you know facilities to um get the show um, I, actually, I didn't know that it was going to end up being like a television show where it's going to be live online and stuff like that. But I was already interviewing people because one thing that I learned is that most of the things that I know in life, it's not only the things that I learned from school. It's, it's mostly the things that I learned from talking to people. You know, having a conversation with you guys right now, um, th that's when I learned. You know that's how that's how I learn um, the correct the correct way of of pronouncing a certain word. Um, you know, a correct way of approaching a person, correct manner of saying something. You know, because you know, as human beings, we we are different. There's people that wants to be approached in a different manner. There's people who wants to be approached in a specific manner. Um, and for me to be able to click and never have any, you know, um, you know. Um, problems with those people i have to know how i need to approach those people so we can have a long-term relationship rather than me being myself and just you know doing things the way that i think it's supposed to be so um um yes i started i i i was already doing this you know interviewing people and then um capturing the videos through a uh, phone um, and um, through a camera, if I have somebody that I know who has a camera, I've interviewed a lot of people from Johannesburg, South Africa, and Durban, South Africa, in which some of the videos um, were published on Diverse TV. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. I, I, th that's how that's how the show started, and 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 you know, um, I have been doing it for some time, but I didn't know it was gonna get to this level you know in which you know um if you do what you love you always get ideas it's either maybe the ideas come from the people who are asking questions that okay when can i watch the show and you're like oh i don't have a live television show or a youtube channel then you start saying okay um all right i need to open a youtube channel so that people can be able to watch it at home and you know one will also come and say you know can i also have an interview and then you're like oh so i should interview people like you know uh, live and stuff like that i mean when you do something that you love you always get ideas from people who step in and ask questions and you know those questions that people are asking if you do not understand you'll think that, are, that those are offensive questions but if you do understand that you, you will know that those are questions that will make your show grow up and make your, your um your projects or show or whatever that you're working on to be much bigger than what it is at that current moment I hope I, I did answer the question. Yeah, you, you did. And you led right into the next question very, very smoothly. Damon, you're on. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lungani, some of the things you said there, you're talking about um, being a student or, or studying and, and that you um, 
you learn so much just from people that you meet and from conversations and everything. And I really have noticed that about you, that that's like a special quality and skill of yours is like, you're very attentive and you're learning from things all the time. You're like studying, studying your environment, studying all kinds of things you encounter. It's really amazing. And um, I've just seen you learn a lot, like in, in the time I've known you. And um, so back when you were um, doing the music videos, when you were dancing in the music videos and working with those stars, you'd ask them questions, right? And you'd in interview them, ask them about what they were interested in. So did you have this show in mind way back then? Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think you, you are correct that I also touched on that a little bit. I think I'm going to try and, and, and play one of the videos um from the artists you know from the top artists that i've worked with before um i'll see if i can be able to do that today um but no the, to answer your question no i i didn't have the show in mind but um it, like i said it was driven by the love the love will direct you where to go you know and you'd find yourself in a destination that you didn't know that you were going to end um you know on but um yeah, I was, I mean, the, the, the main reason why I was interviewing people is the fact that I wanted to learn from them. I wanted to know about them, you know. It wasn't the fact that I want to create a show in the future. The show just came because of the nature of what I had in mind or the nature of the love that I had for people and what I wanted to achieve you know, in which it was knowing about people and spreading the word to as many people as I can, you know, because everybody wants to be heard. From my experience, if there's somebody out there who doesn't want to be heard, then I'm wrong. But from my experience, everybody in the world wants to be heard. They want to tell their story. They want to be understood, you know. They want to share their background, you know, whether it's it, it, they went through struggle they went through, you know, a beautiful times. They want to share that because when they die, they dying with all of that. All of those memories, it's, it's in their minds, you know. So when they spit it out and talk to the people, they're trying to take those images and those videos because all the videos that we have right now, it's an imitation of what we have in mind and which there was somebody who became intelligent to try and take it to the physical. It's all the memories, the videos that plays in your mind right now as you are looking at me, thinking of something. There's a video that you see, there's an image that you see, and there's somebody out there who thought of taking that into the real world where we can be able to see with our eyes. So everybody wants to have that same thing where they can take whatever is in their minds, their hard drive, their hard drive, and put it out there to the physical world where everybody can be, can see and say, oh my God, I didn't know. I saw Damon as a top star who sings and he sings like everything is going well in his life. I didn't know that he was going, when he was go growing up, he went through this and this is how he started his music and this is why he's doing his music and this is why, this is what he's going through right now. So that's what I had in my mind that I want to give a platform for everybody or anyone that wants to be heard because I was one of the people that wanted to be heard by people because I was that perfect person who everything that he does, it's so amazing. It's good. It's perfect. You know, all the feedback that I would receive from the people is just perfect, you know, but it was hard for me to talk about my weaknesses because everything that I do was like perfect to everybody, you know? So I was like, okay, you know what? They need to be a platform where everyone can express themselves and talk about the private life that we don't know about. And this is the platform. I didn't know it was going to get to this point, but I'm, 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 I'm grateful that it got to this point. Excellent. It, it's so, it's such a gift. Now, um, at the last Academy Awards, or maybe the one before that, because since COVID, I don't know how many Academy Awards there have been, um, but either the last one or the one before, there was a short film that won the, 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 the Academy Award, and it was about a, uh, an African father who had an African daughter 
the mother was not around. I think she died. And the father had to try to fix her hair. And he tried very hard and he didn't. It didn't really do a very good job. And the little girl was very upset with him. And so I have some African kids and um, your one brother, um, um, I, little Ivan, um, he has half African hair and half white hair. So if you look at him when he was a little kid, he'd have this like, well, it was the 70s. So he had an afro with these like spikes of straight hair sticking out of it. He looked like a satellite from Russia, the Sputnik satellite. And of course, that was a big deal. And it was up to me to solve this problem. Now, I don't even have much hair, so I don't know about any kind of hair. But in terms of little Ivan and, and you know, I don't know, controlling his hair and making it work, it was hard for me. Mm. Um, mm. And so on your show, you seem to have this huge head of hair. But then here today, you don't have that huge head of hair. And without giving away any of your secrets, um, <laughs> is that your real hair? <laughs> uh, okay, so I, I, I cut my hair yesterday because it wasn't birthday. So, um, and um, yeah, it was. Uh... <laughs> okay, just to answer to to to, to answer your question, um... me being confused, huh? <laughs> Um, no, no, no. Actually, what happens is, um, and this is a very, it's, it's, it's a very serious question because um, there's a lot of people who go through the same thing, um, who want to decorate themselves so they can be able to hide who they are, and so they can, so that they can be free um, in the public. You know, if they make any mistake, then it's going to be like, okay, it wasn't me. It was that guy who is hiding behind the mask or that guy who is hiding behind that funny costume or or whatever it is there, you know. So um, when I grew up um, today or yesterday, I realized that, you know, yes, it was a character. But if you have been into a character before, you will remember that when you are becoming a character, you are becoming someone else. You're not becoming yourself. You are becoming someone else. Right? It's like you wearing something that will hide who you are, that if you make a mistake, you can step up, step out and say, uh -huh, that was uh, Lungani Kuala from the, from the Global Sunday. It wasn't me, you know. Um in which I've seen a lot of top artists, artists like Will Smith, um, artists like uh, a lot of artists who were hiding behind who they are in in in, in the public as 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 um, as characters, and as time goes on, they realize that it is not healthy for them. What is healthy is to be who you are in the public in the public because that's what people who are watching at home want to see you know that that and, and it's so amazing because if you are who you are it makes you that if there's a word that you cannot read on the script you'll be like uh mr laden damien i don't know what this word means can you please help me out because i'm being who i am but if i'm gonna be this person who's in the character and i'm like hey everybody i'm lungani guala and this is and then i'm acting like i am somebody who i'm not if i have a mistake i will stress for the whole entire freaking week you know because i was trying to be this person that I'm not, you know, so I realized that putting a, putting hair on my head is making me somebody that I'm not. I don't have that much hair, you know, so when I grew up and I, I celebrated my birthday, I was like, you know what, scrap it, let me be who I am, you know, and I encourage whoever is watching right now, you know, they're trying to build something, they're trying to be, they are public figures, be yourself, because if you are not being yourself, how long can you sustain this person that you don't know who he is? You know, and if that person makes a mistake, you're going to be stressing for, I mean, it takes the entire, I don't know, months for some people 
years for some people to, to recover from a mistake that you made in the public. But if you are who you are, if you are drunk and you drink a lot, be who you are. And then, and then you will see what impacts it makes to the people who are watching. And then you will change according to the impacts that you make to the people who are watching. If you being a person who, who get drunk all the time, who get drunk all the time when you are in the public, then you will see people getting drunk and masses, being, masses, masses happening around the world. And you will be like, it's all because of me. I need to change how I behave, you know, and then you will change. But, um, yeah, if you're not being who you are, it's it's really going to be hard because you will just be doing it for maybe making money or hiding, hiding the real you that you are not, you are not happy with. You know, you're hiding yourself because you're not, you're not, you are not happy with who you are. So you are putting an extra image in front of you for people to cheer you up and, you know, make you feel like you're a great person when you don't feel like that, when you are, you know, the real person that you are within you. I mean, I, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm just going to keep quiet before I mess this up. But yeah, um, I realized <laughs> that I need to be who I am um, for the people to really learn from me and say, you know what? I was scared to do this, but he's, 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 he's just being himself. I can do it and be myself because whoever I am in real life, it's a contribution in the world. We are different because we need to help one another and we need to contribute in this world in a different way. So I'll be who I am. Whoever doesn't like who I am, then it's me. It means it's not for him it's, or it's not for them. It's for somebody else out there who needs me. So we, we can't fulfill everyone's dreams, but we, can, we have a group of people that we are here for them. So I'm just going to keep quiet before people start complaining. Um, I hope I answered the question. <laughs> Thank you, Lungani. Lung Lungani, that um, the intro to the show that you do, the really the fast talking, you know, it's amazing. Uh, how long did it take you to master that? <laughs> um, let, let, let me say the intro. Let me say the intro. Uh, but um, it, it took me like a, a week. Um, cause when the show started, I used to do it every day. Um, yeah, if you remember, I did play, um, you know, um, sh some short clips of how the show started, but it took me like a week. And what I'm actually doing is, um, an introduction, um, that talks about who I am. You know, it's a very famous thing that happens in, back in, 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 in Africa. That's how people used to introduce themselves. And, um, uh, um, there's an actual word for it. And uh, it's an English term, um, but in Zulu it is tagazelo. In in English, um, the clans. I think I think I don't know. I don't want to say something that's that's not 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 accurate. But um, it's when you are saying your history, your background, whether it's a good it's a good background or it's a bad background. But you 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 always include it in that that statement that you say when you're introducing yourself um even if i i i killed a lot of people it's a bad thing but i also mentioned that because it's part of my history even if i you know i got drunk in the public and fell asleep naked in the public i will include that in that introduction because it's part of who i am and what i did you know so so yeah so yeah it took me like a week because uh, it's very fast and uh, you know um yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> so slow it down. Should I slow were you, it down? Were you naked, drunk in public and killed people? <laughs> it's too fast for us to get it. No, that was, was an example. Saying. No, that was an example. <laughs> <laughs> that was an example. It's not actually what I did. Um, I'm fortunate uh, so far. The only thing that I did, the only things that I did it was being a public stripper. And um, yeah, I, I'm sweet and uh, I'm called chocolate and which is part of this, the thing that I say when I open the show. So yeah. <laughs> so if you could have anyone on the show, living or dead, a fictional character, you know, Mickey Mouse or, you know, Poseidon, the, the, the god of the sea, if you, what would be the top three picks of people you would like to have on the show to bring to the public this this intimate, special, really um, embracing kind of view. Who would that be? Um, 
that's a very that's a very toughie that's a toughie that's a tough question uh for me because um from you know from the people that i've worked with they they all know that i treat people equally um the fact that i've interviewed the world famous rapper or musician who is um fat man scoop it doesn't mean that he's always gonna be in front of everything that happens in the show i'm gonna show him more than everyone everyone else um no it doesn't work like that but I acknowledge and appreciate everybody that I have on the show and uh, I always make sure that I keep in contact and I remind them all the time that, you know what, what you did by making time to be part of the show is really, really appreciated. You know, it's not easy. It's not really, it's not easy to sit there and speak to the public and especially since this is a global show, it's not easy, you know, so... But to answer your question, I think there is somebody that pops in my mind, which is Celine Dion. Because <laughs> I grew up listening to her music. You know, it speaks to me. Um, somehow, I think I'm very connected to her. You know, I really love to have her on the show. And I have a lot of questions for her. You know, if I can get an opportunity to talk to her on the show, I think... That would be so amazing because I have a lot of questions to ask her because the music that I listened to, the music that she composed or uh, she, she created, it, it's so amazing that I always ask myself, how did it how did it pop up into her mind? What was in her mind? Um, and um, the second person would be Eminem. Eminem. Um, one ho one of his music that he created that I can I cannot still even right now I can I can't figure it out how he he created that music it, um it's called Stan a video that is called Stan um where he has somebody who is doing his lyrics and it says it's just it's just like a story a story a story of a pregnant woman who is dating this guy um who is so much in love with eminem's music and eminem on his own like he loves eminem like nobody else does and he gets really pissed off when eminem doesn't respond to his to his mails and when he doesn't appreciate him you know it's things that we go through as artists because people they think that you know you can give attention to each and everybody that is your fan but there's there's a lot of things that you need to do and there's a lot of things that you know um, i mean anyways so yeah it's eminem the second person will be Eminem. And um, the last person would be, I have to think about this one. Because um, there's like 10 people in my mind. But choosing one would be really unfair. It's like 20 or 10 people. But I'll just, you know, choose those two, you know, for now. Um, and yeah, and 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 then and then one of those person, one of those people would be like Margot Fontaine. I know she's she's no longer alive, but I would really, really, it would be an honor to have a conversation with Margot Fontaine because of how, you know, people talk about her, what kind of a person she was, and you know the books that she 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 wrote, and it's so amazing. She's like. Uh, like a superhero type of a person that you have a lot of questions to ask like how do you think how do you make decisions how do you you know so so yeah that that would be the third person uh, i'm just gonna keep quiet before I, I i you know finish the time okay so lungani um besides the global sunday show what are you doing in your life and what kind of plans do you have for the future um Okay, hey uh, guys, you, you have you, you have really amazing questions. Um, yeah, um, beside the glo besides the global Sunday, um, I I'm just gonna share this, but I'm not gonna be very uh, specific and deep. <clears throat> but I I do spiritual spiritual works where I pray for people and and um, you know I have a, I have a, a group of people from from the US. I have a group of people from. Uh, from Africa that we do um, 
um, prayer prayers together and um, you know we, we do a lot of spiritual healing and uh, yeah 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 I'm just gonna keep it there it's it's a very private life but um, I thought I should just share it briefly um, that's what I do in life in which I take it very serious also <clears throat> and then also I am a dancer by profession um, I'm a hip hop dancer. I'm an African contemporary dancer. I'm, a, I'm, I'm right now. I'm in a program that I'm doing here in America uh, for my uh, pedagogy, in which, um, also, of course, uh, Mr. Laden is uh, um, the director of the academy that I'm studying in. Um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a videographer. You know, I, I do, you know, video editing. Um, I do graphic design. Um, I do, and yeah, I'm a, I'm also a hip hop artist, you know. <laughs> um, every now and then, when I get an opportunity, I also record as 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 a musician, uh, but a, like a rapper, you know. But I haven't done it in a long time because I always make sure whatever that I do, I do it perfectly um, in my own world. Uh, if 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 it's something that I won't be able to do hundred percent full out, then I decide to just stop and not do it at all. But yeah, I have some recordings that I've done with like really good artists from, um, you know, different places. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I remember for now. <laughs> uh, yeah. That is so, um, an amazing dancer um, and you've made some amazing music videos. Yeah, say. thank you. He really is. Um, speaking of which... <laughs> All right, so fans out there, Langani's fans watching this show, I want you to break the internet. I want you to flood in with so many demands that will answer the question, when are we going to see you again dancing in a pop video? Oh, uh, a pop video? Well, a, so, a, a major distribution video. I'm I'm old. For me, that's pop. But maybe now it's uh, called something else. I don't know. Right, 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 right. Okay, all right. I had to ask because, um, you know, uh, we in in the hip hop industry, we we have um, 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 you know, something that is called popping. You know, <laughs> it's oh, called popping. Oh. It's 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 a dance. Um, that is under hip hop, you know. In in hip hop, you have uh, um, break dancing, you have um, um, you have popping, you have locking, you have tatting, you have. There's a lot of um, different elements under under hip hop. So there's popping, in which I I also do popping. So um, yeah, I know what popping me means in terms of the music, but um, I wanted to make sure, um, you know. You know, no, what? no, no. Uh, the old people have popping and locking too, but it has to do with arthritis and getting up and down out of chairs. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, a a mainstream global release, big deal music video. Right, right, absolutely. Um, yeah. So since I am now uh, engaging more with um, like really top artists, like in, including Damon, you know, he's a musician and he's one of one of the global top artist you know um who knows he might call me and say you know i'm doing a music video could you pull through and do some dance moves you know um you know I i'll definitely do it i'll definitely do it you know as much as people are supporting me whenever i say send a message or call and say i have something like this and they just pull through without any hesitation i'm willing to also do the same thing you know and um yeah, to answer your question, yes, very soon. I don't know the specific time because there's a lot of things that I'm working on, my own projects. I'm trying to bring back uh, the, you know, um, dance to Beijing, but as something different because now uh, I live here in America. Maybe it's going to be dance to America or dance to Africa or dance to something. But, um, you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of preparations that I'm doing right now. But if there is a, an artist out there who wants to collaborate with me and do a music video, I will definitely be part of it. But I I, I did leave a mark behind me because I've worked with, I had my dancers that I was working with, choreographing for them and do teachings. And when they were prepared, I would do music videos with them. Um, yeah, I would really love to see them proceeding with that um, instead of me. Because there's things that you want to do and move on and do something else. 
leave it to somebody else that can continue. Um, yeah, but if that gap cannot be closed, then, you know, I'm, I'm still willing to do it because I, I, I mean, I'm still a good dancer, I believe. <laughs> and um, it would be really nice to see, um, you know, a person like me on screen doing the dance because I always want to demonstrate for people before I tell them what to do, you know, just to show them how it's done before I ask them to do it. So, yeah, soon, soon, soon. I don't know when. I don't have an, a specific answer, like a specific date or time frame, but soon, soon I will be um, visible to um, pop music videos. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you've done so much for fellow artists, uh, creating Dance to Beijing, helping with personal management. Um, what drives you to keep helping artists? Wow. Um, I think part of it is that um, everything that I do, I always want to give my 100%. If I'm not gonna give my hundred percent, then I'd rather not do it. I mean, it's 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 uh, um, you know what I just said a few a few seconds ago, um, and the fact that everything and anything that I do in my life, it always it it, it is always not only for me. It's for the public. So it's like um, Damien. It's like I don't know. You you don't have a child right now, I believe, but when you have a child. When you have a child, what will drive you is the love of the child, right? Um, and things that you will do for the child will come from the love that you have for the child. So you will do at some point some stuff that you never plan to do at all just because you love the child. So it's the same thing that happens to me. The drive is the love for the people. And whatever that I'm doing right now, it's not what I plan to do, but it's what drives me because of the love that I have for the people. So it's the same thing that will happen to you when you have a child. You'll be like, oh my God, the ch my child needs this now. I have to do this. But it's not something that you planned before the child was born. you know. And it's not something that you plan when the child is already there. It's, it's things that comes to you as you grow with the child in which I'm growing with the global Sunday. Now I'm, 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 you know, identifying things that, that, that artists needs that the community needs. And I'm saying, okay, I can be able to cover that. Let me try and cover it. And there's things that I can see, but I cannot cover at all. I'll be like, okay, it's not the right time. When the right time comes, then I'll be, I'll be able to cover those things. or I'll try to cover the thing. So yeah, what drives me is that love then, and is the love and the passion of the community. You know, it's all about the community. It's all about the people. I'm doing this for the people. I'm not doing this for myself. Um, in which that's the reason why the last 48 hours I was thinking about these people who were part of the show. And, and you know, the only thing that is always in my mind is the people. And whatever comes, I will accept it and, and, and try to make things according to what's the needs for the community. If it's only going to benefit me, then it's not that important. You know, so that, that, that what drives me. I hope that answers your question. Wow, totally. Thank you so much. So we asked all the questions we had and you didn't go Beep, once. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> tell us Maybe what you don't want to the news. <laughs> let, let, let's tell, tell us what you don't want to talk about. What I don't want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think I think maybe um, because they, there's um, people who made a special request that they want to, um, you know, um, have a talk with me. They want to call in and, um, you know, and wish me a birthday. I think this is the right time um, to talk to, to, to those people right now and, and, you know, just to hear them saying happy birthday, where they're from, where they're watching from right now. Um, I know it was supposed to be earlier than this. Some of them, they might be asleep right now, but I, I'll try to get um, hold of them. And also maybe we can um, also, you know, um, have a look at what's happening on the news today, you know, <laughs> um, and then, <laughs> and then I, I, you know, and then I, I, I will tell you guys what I do not want to talk about because I know that means 
that's exactly what we're going to talk about. So, I don't know. Do you want to um, go to the news or do you want to sure. um, have a talk with um, one of uh, our viewers at home? You are running the show today, so I don't know. It's all up to okay. you. Okay. Well, why don't we why don't we talk to one of your viewers at home? So if they they have to go to bed, we can always do the news a little bit later. Why don't you why don't you give a call to to one of your fans out there? Right, absolutely. Uh, do you want Celine Dion's phone number? I've got it here. Yeah. <laughs> right. So right now right now we have um, we have Ash on the phone. Um, that's ah. uh, the person that we have right now. So um, everybody say hello to Ash. Hello, Ash. Hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, Have you recovered from yesterday? Yes, I am. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I just, so right when you called, I stuck up, like right before, while it was ringing, I have... Anyways, I'm finishing chewing a piece of cantaloupe, but I'm all, I'll be done in a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we are live. Uh, we are live right now when we have you... Um, we are we have you on the phone um yeah is there anything that you want to say uh to the people who are watching at home or to me um or um to our panelists today we have damon easton um okay. and we have mr laden um so so yeah we are All celebrating right. my birthday yeah wow I'm, I'm gonna sing you happy birthday and if they can they should sing with me i don't know about timing or if it works, but maybe it does. I don't know. But anyways, okay. happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lungani. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Boop, boop, birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so so much. Um yeah, um and, and then what are your plans for today? Um, well, honestly, just stuff that I've got to do. So like mm -hmm. lecture stuff and quizzes and I'm taking three summer courses, which it's usually the 16 week frame, but, um, now it's eight weeks just cause it's summer. So it's shorter. So that's just like, there's just stuff to do every day for them. Um, wow. so not that interesting to hear, but just, you know, I'll tackle that stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, pretty Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you and, so much. And um, yeah, I really appreciate yeah. you. Um, thank you for singing for me as well. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> have, a, have a lovely bad day of mine. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. And happy birthday. Have a good rest of the show. And um, yeah, it, do, do you feel, you know, I, I, I honestly almost know your age, but I feel like you're not telling on your age, but I might be a year <laughs> off. So I'm curious, but how does it feel? To today oh okay <clears throat> so spiritually i am 151 years old today um okay. but physically i am around 30 something you know <laughs> i'm yes, around yeah yeah i'm around 30 something um, you're early 30s though if you say 30 something people are gonna think you're like 39 <laughs> that's fine <laughs> that's fine as long as they, <laughs> as long as they know they just think that's fine <laughs> you know so yeah, um, yeah, it, it feels it feels good. Um, but uh, once I'm forty, then maybe I think there will be an impact. What what I'm once I'm forty in the physical, or once I'm one hundred and sixty in the spiritual, then there will be a slight, you know, change. But right now, I just feel like I'm sixteen, eighteen, nineteen. You know, there's no difference. There's not much that, you know, of a difference. So yeah, that, sure. that's how I feel. And and then any takeaway from the year, like any. Did you notice any theme of the year or like general thing you worked on or lessons learned or just memorableness of it? I know it was like kind of COVID y, but whatever. Anything, any takeaways from the year? Oh, wow. Um, that's really interesting. Um, actually, I, I will include even the last year because it's only June right now. It's been six months for this year, and the year is like really running so quick. Um, right. But, um, a huge lesson that I learned um, is that um, when you have people um, around you that supports you and understands what your visions and goals are, it's the most incredible thing. So, um, since I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that um, my my friends from from you know from South Africa were not 
those kind of um, quality people. But um, to be honest, since I moved to here in America, um, I am having a lot of people that understands me. They understand my vision. They do not limit me when I have um, an idea. They uh, they fully support the idea, even if it doesn't make sense. If I say I want to go to the moon tomorrow, they'll be like, oh, OK, wh what can we do to, to, you know, to make that possible? <laughs> you know, they wouldn't be like, are you crazy? You want to go to the moon? You don't even have a spaceship, you know. So um, it's 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 just so amazing. It's so amazing. Um, the support that I have, it just makes me um, limitless. It doesn't keep me stuck in that tiny little box where I am only able to to do you know certain things that make sense to people that lives on earth but it gives me an opportunity to work on things that has never been seen before in which there's a lot of things I'm working on right now in which I'm not going to talk about but yeah that's the most highlights that I can I can share with you right now Nice that's really that's really positive and big yeah Yeah <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we, all right. I didn't um, expect that. But yeah. <laughs> good question. Good question. Um, yeah. yeah, we're gonna go to the news now. Um, I think uh, Mr. Laden, Mr. Laden is ready, but I'm gonna pass it over to you guys so you can say something before we go to the news. And we are going to be talking to um, other people on um, um, online who are gonna be calling in. And thank you so much, Ash, and have a lovely day. All right, you too. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. Over to you guys. So, um, Damon, that was a very interesting question that Ash asked him yeah. about, you know, the takeaway of the year. What was your takeaway of this year? Oh, boy. Um, what a year. What a year. Um, that's really hard to boil down to one thing. Um, I really appreciated having the time that this year gave me. Um, and kind of the step back from everything. Um, and I, boy, I've started new projects this year. I'm doing a comic book now. I'm a comic book artist now. Um, and um, boy, there's, there's so much, but my takeaway from the year, um, hmm, like a lesson that I've learned about it uh, from this year. Um, I feel like it's that you can um, you can change anything starting with yourself. Like you can change your life looking at, starting with looking at yourself mm. and how you're holding yourself back. I feel like the thing that I've really learned this year is that I've gotten a perspective on my life where I've really seen how many amazing opportunities I've always had and how I've been the main thing holding myself back. And I didn't see it that way before. And I do now. And um, I mean, I wouldn't want to speak for anybody else. I wouldn't want to tell them that that's true in the same way for their lives. But, um, but I know that looking, looking to myself, I've been able to change a lot by looking at, at what I'm doing to hold myself back. And um, so that, I guess that's, that's what I'd like to share. That's wonderful. Well, why don't we right, take a break now? And we'll go to our first news segment. Um, and just with no uh, further introduction, welcome to Global Sunday News. I'm Kenneth Ludden, and um, today is June 13th, 2021, the birthday of Langani Guala. And um, unfortunately, um, the leaders of the seven largest nations in the world were not able to make Langani's birthday celebration because they're having a meeting. Um, People in Tokyo are busy with the Olympics. Um, everybody is uh, worried about Hong Kong and Beijing. But um, in this news clip from Adadarana Studio 24 in Colombo, Sri Lanka, uh, let's look at the first segment of news for June 13th, 2021. We're starting off today's coverage with the reassuring overseas visit by the U.S. President. Now, in their first face-to-face -face meeting, President Biden and British Prime Minister Johnson sought to demonstrate the enduring partnership between the U.S. and the U.K. Joe Biden also announced the purchase of 500 million Pfizer vaccine doses to be donated to nearly 100 countries most in need. 
There, two nations have stood together through some of the toughest times history has to offer. Tonight, President Biden and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson are seeking to demonstrate that partnership endures. Now facing the biggest public health crisis in a century, the president is positioning the U.S. as the world leader in the fight to defeat the disease, announcing the purchase of 500 million Pfizer vaccine doses to be donated to nearly 100 countries most in need. Our vaccine donations don't include pressure for favors or potential concessions. We're doing this to save lives. The doses to be produced in the U.S. will begin shipping out in August with the full order to be completed by next summer. The move follows pressure on the president to do more with a stark divide in vaccination rates around the world. 52% of Americans have received at least one shot, but in Asia, it's just 6%, and in Africa, only 2%. The key to reopening and growing economies is to vaccinate your people. Earlier, the two leaders renewing the Atlantic Charter, a post-war declaration of cooperation, first signed by Winston Churchill and FDR, addressing new challenges today from cyber threats to climate change. Johnson & Johnson said the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has extended the shelf life of its single-shot COVID-19 vaccine from three months to four and a half months as millions of unused doses nationwide near expiration. To give us more details, we have the World News Special Correspondent Nicola Senaratan joining us now from New York in the U.S. Nicola? Yes, Sahid. Safety concern about Johnson & Johnson's shot and flagging demand for vaccinations have left closer to half of the 21 million doses the company has produced for the United States sitting unused. The health regulations decision was based on data from ongoing studies which demonstrated that the vaccine is stable at four and a half months when refrigerated at temperatures of 36 to 46 degrees and 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. At least 13 lots of Johnson & Johnson shots have expiration dates on June 27th or earlier. It is not clear how many doses that reflects Johnson & Johnson has another 100 million doses on hand, but shipment time is uncertain. A top White House official urged state governors to work with the FDA to extend the shelf life of Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. Johnson & Johnson said vaccine providers should visit its website to check expiration dates of vaccines currently available in the country. Back to you, Sahid. Thank you, Devadhan World News Special Correspondent Nicholas Hill, reporting to us from New York in the U.S. Britain said G7 leaders will agree to expand global COVID vaccine manufacturing to provide at least 1 million doses to the world through sharing and financing schemes. This year, the coronavirus won't stop the G7 summit from taking place in person. Still, the pandemic remains top of the agenda. Ahead of the conference, European Union officials are joining calls to further investigate COVID-19's origins, adding pressure on China. A World Health Organization team in China earlier this year was not allowed full access to data. We have to know where it did come from in order to draw the right lessons and to develop the right tools to make sure that this will never happen again. And therefore, the investigators need complete access to whatever is necessary to really uh, find the source. With the world still crawling out from under the pandemic's wreckage, G7 nations have acknowledged responsibility to aid less affluent regions and speed up recovery. One idea, waiving intellectual property rights for COVID-19 vaccines and treatments. It's likely to be a contentious topic. France expressed support Wednesday, but the UK and Germany are against it. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron has called for pharmaceutical groups producing vaccines against the virus to donate 10% of their production to poor nations. Macron also urged leaders of the G7 nations to back a goal of getting 60% of Africans vaccinated by the end of March 2022. Beijing has broken its legal obligations by undermining Hong Kong's high degree of autonomy and used a national security law to drastically curtail freedoms in the global financial hub, according to a report by Britain on its former colony.
British Foreign Minister Dominic Raab slammed Beijing for undermining the autonomy of Hong Kong in a blistering report delivered on Thursday. He criticised a national security law imposed by China on the former British colony used to, quote, drastically curtail freedoms and stifle political opposition. Raab said there had been clear breaches of the 1984 joint declaration signed by both China and Britain that guaranteed wide-ranging freedoms for Hong Kong. That declaration paved the way for the handover of Hong Kong back to China a little over a decade later. He also singled out the overhaul of the city's electoral system and prosecution decisions made by the Department of Justice. The Hong Kong government has hit back at what it described as inaccurate remarks that could not be, quote, further from the truth and are clearly double standards. The security law, which was introduced in June last year, punishes what authorities broadly define as secession, sedition and collusion with foreign forces with up to life in prison. The dream has come true. With only just over a month away from the Tokyo Olympics, controversial meetings are taking place with still not a 100% confirmation on the continuation of the Games. For more on this, we have the new world news press correspondent Rasta Chandadasa on the ground to give us more details from Tokyo, Japan. Rasta? Was I? With just 42 days left to the Olympics, the public debates are just getting heated up. There was a special emergency meeting on Wednesday between the main stakeholders, which was the Tokyo Metropolitan Government and the Organising Committee as well as the IOC. There was some surprise announcement. The IOC announced that over 80% of the athletes has been vaccinated already, which was surprising because some of the participants have not already been declared yet. And also in Japan, we are experiencing a very slow vaccine rollout and only those who are over 65 are getting their first shots. And even the post-meeting uh, announcement, people were getting some surprise announcement later. For an example, athletes will only be allowed inside the village in the eve of the Olympics, not the weeks before, as in some cases. And also, there will be a tight control over the practice sessions in and out of the Olympic village. And also, we might see a total ban on foreign spectators, as well as a partial ban on the Japanese spectators. There was also a very interesting debate on the parliament last Wednesday where Prime Minister Suga Yoshihide and the opposition leaders debated over the conduct of the Olympics. Uh, Edano Yukio-san, the, the opposition leader, questioned Suga-san over the actual conduct of the event as well as the impact on the safety network. While Suga-san, he was firm on his decision to have the Olympics, most of us think he failed to give proper answers to the opposition queries. Suga-san left Japan last evening to attend the G7 summit in UK. No doubt, Olympics along with the corona vaccination would dominate those discussions. And we believe Suga-san will persuade the other leaders to confirm their participation. And also, we might even see a joint declaration from the world leaders uh, confirming their participation. The real question is if we can find a common ground with the Japanese public. For the past two weeks, from the debates we have, we think it's going to be a really hard task. Over to you. That was the news today, and now we're back to the special Lungani Guala birthday celebration version of the Global Sunday. And I believe we've got somebody on the phone who is really making a difference in the world of music in Africa and all around. And that is my very, very esteemed person that I respect is Mr. Mwandla. I believe he's on the phone. Oh, not quite. I thought he was already on the phone. <laughs> Please, everybody, say hello to Mr. Mwandla. Hello, Mr. Mwandla. <laughs> hello, hi, everyone. 
Um, Mr. Mwanza, uh, thank you so much um, um, for calling in. Uh, you are live uh, on the Global Sunday Show. Um, we are live with you now. Um, and then we're just gonna wow. we're just gonna hand it over to you, sir. Wow, wow! Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I just want to say happy birthday to Dumani Kwada. He's a special guy. Eh? Um, ever since I met him, I've met a lot from him. So I just want to say happy birthday, long life, my brother. And uh, th we thank God for for you. You know. May he keep you for us because, you know, there are many lives that are being touched and changed through you. So please keep on what you do. Just carry on doing what you're doing. We are an amazing blessing there with your team. So, yeah, thank you so much. Happy birthday. Oh, man. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, you, you are also one of the people that I learned from. Um, very inspiring individual with a lot of ideas, with wisdom. I thank you so much. I really appreciate I'm it. Humbled. <laughs> I'm humbled. I recorded a short piece here on my piano. Uh, I don't normally sing, but uh, I always sing on special occasions like this. Oh, so wow. I hope you like it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Um, the, are you, yeah. you going to play it now? I sent it on uh, on WhatsApp. On WhatsApp, it is possible to play it live. Okay, perfect. Let me uh, let me they, play. Let me play. Let me play. It. I got it. Yeah, this is the second one I, I sent. All right, absolutely. Let me play it. Let me play. It. Okay, thanks. I just want to say happy birthday to. <laughs> wow thank you so much thank you so much uh, mr Mwantla. um that was that, that was really amazing that was really amazing um any 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 last words to say to the people who are watching you're welcome, you're welcome. Mwantla, you've done something unbelievable you've left Longani with nothing to say <laughs> That gives you superpowers. Well, yeah. Um... <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Is there any? Is there I any... guess I need, I need to. I vocal lesson seriously. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that you'd like yeah. to say to the people? watching and the people who are at the studio right now um uh, mr mandla before uh, we, we oh, yeah. the show. yes yes sir go for it please oh oh yeah thank you so much for giving me that platform hey, yesterday wow it was amazing yeah hey we, you know tables were fed i'm telling you you, you uh, the show was amazing so the show you organized uh with your board of directors day in usa it's really really um, touched lives here. I was there from the beginning till the, to, to the end, and it was amazing. And uh, I, I'm just speechless. I don't know what to say, but all I can say, uh, we wish if we could have more of these um, concerts happening here in South Africa. Hmm. So, yeah, thank you so much for those concerts. And yeah, I don't want to take long. All I want to say, thank you so much. Have, have a great day. Uh, be blessed. Yeah, happy birthday. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, have a lovely um, evening there in South Africa. We really appreciate you. We honor you. And um, I know you're one of the people that made the show possible. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate you, sir. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm humbled. Thank you wow. for watching. Wow. There was Mr. Mwanda all the way from Durban, South Africa. Uh, I'm just going to hand over to my... Uh, lovely host mr damon and mr laden over to you thank you Langani. 
And now, now, according to what I heard before the news, we're each going to get two questions, I think. Hmm. All right, you go for it. You do the first strike, and then when I smell blood in the water, I'll circle around and tap. Okay, Lungani, you've done a year of the Global Sunday Show. What? And we already talked about how you're a great learner. You're always studying your environment. You're always learning from every situation, every person you meet. What is the biggest thing you've learned from doing a year of this show? Uh, okay. Oh, wow. That's a good one. <laughs> um, the biggest thing was that... Um, I think this is really amazing because it really is going to help a lot of people out there. Whether you are in in, in whether you are uh, um, in the artistic artistical world or whether you're in, in the corporate business or whatever that is there. But I think it's a very general um, thing that will help a lot of people. But what I learned the most um, on this show is that there's people, um, Damon. There's people that you cannot be able to work with and you, you need to accept that you know um there's people that when you work with everything just flows they understand you you understand them and there's people that you can try so hard to work with but you know it, it doesn't happen they don't understand how you work they don't want to take risks you know, they just want to take shortcuts and, you know, they want to limit themselves, you know. So it doesn't mean that those people you never work with in the future, but it means that at that current moment, those people are not ready to work with you. Continue to do what you need to do so that they can learn. They can learn from you and they will understand exactly what was your idea. And maybe they're going to come back and say, oh, now I see what you were talking about. Or, you know, they will go and do it privately on their own and be like, oh, he did it, which means it works. So let me try it. So I've learned that there's people that you can work with at that current time. And there's people that you need to accept that you cannot work with them at that moment because they're not ready for it or they, they are not keen to take risks and, 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 and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's that, that's that's what I learned. And um yeah I've, I've, yeah, I've been fortunate that, you know, people that I've worked with most of the time, it's people that want to take risks. And a few of them, you know, they, they were not ready. So I was like, okay, let me move, mo let me move on. Um, yeah. And, and, and also take, making decisions, making decisions. Because if you are just floating and not knowing what direction you're taking, it's, it becomes very hard for you. But if you make a decision and, saying, and, and say that, okay, I'm going to stop doing this and I'm going to continue doing this. It's very healthy for your life because you have made a decision and you know that you are sticking to this. But if you are going to say, um, you know, you are in the middle, you, 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 you don't decide which path you are taking. It becomes very hard and you come across a lot of challenges because you do not make a decision. Even if it's a tough decision where you have to say, okay, you know what? Today, I'm not going to be part of the show. I have to step out. Even if that's tough for you, but if it's healthy for the environment and it's, if it's healthy for the show, you've got to do it. So that's what I've learned. I've learned to make decisions and to say, okay, this needs to be out. This needs to be in. And this works and this doesn't work. No matter how much I love it, but it, if it doesn't work, I have to make a decision that it's not going to be part of the show. So that's, that's, that's you know, one of the most important things that, I, that I've learned to make decisions, decision making, no matter how hard the, de the decision is, look into the future, how it's going to benefit the project and then make your decision. Don't be scared. Don't be scared that, uh, oh, no, I'm not my show. My face is not going to be showing on the show. What are people going to say? It's the decision that you made. Go for it and, you know, be happy that you thought about it and you made a decision. And I promise you, it's going to benefit you if you know what the reasons for taking that decision. Decision making is, is, is so important. Thank you for that question, uh, Mr. Damien. Yeah, thank you for your answer. So um, I'm going to go back about 12 years, Mungani. Oh, wow. And um, 
we're trying to get a grant, really, really trying to get a grant, trying, this is one of the first attempts to bring um, the, the educational program from our academy to Africa. Um, but, you know, you really have spearheaded that for more than a decade now. Hmm. And in that grant proposal, we, we had to write a bunch of stuff. And, and one of the things was about you. We had to write about proof that you actually were wanting to do something for your community. Uh, I already at that point, we were family, you know, and, and you told me about something you did that it was like, I'd never even met you before. Okay. And it's how dance to Beijing started, but I want you to go back Talk about those first festival performances where you noticed the homeless kids coming back over and over and watching. I want you to talk about that and what you did in response to that. I think that people need to know. Hmm. Well, that, that's... <sighs> Okay, that's very deep. Now I regret myself for making that decision to give you guys two questions each. <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's half of the questions. There's only one more. Oh my God. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, um, talking about the background of Dance to Beijing, some of the things are very um, like private things. Like what I mentioned earlier, like the spiritual part of my life is private. And me helping, you know, homeless people, it's it's very private. But briefly, because I'm not going to say in, any names, I'm not going to mention any names, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I think it's okay to talk about it so that if somebody out there was thinking of doing the same thing, they will know that, you know, it's the right thing to do. And, um, you know, there's always a, a house that is being built in the spirit when you're doing something good for other people. There's always a house for you that is being that is being built so whenever you do something good for people out there it's it's not just something that you know you do it and 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 nothing you 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 know you you don't receive anything back from that you know there's something that you always receive but it's in the spirits if you do not understand the life of the spirits in which i'm not going to get into because that's my private life it's going to be hard for you to understand what's the benefits of doing good things in this world right so um so yeah i i met with these amazing you know individuals from the street and you know i loved the streets more than i loved my home you know i would go and spend some time on the streets like spend time with homeless people and understand them and try to figure out you cannot help people if you do not know why they are in that situation even from the beginning I was very young and I, I still cannot understand how I was able to, you know, to identify those specific deep issues, you know. I still, it's beyond my understanding how I managed to understand these people. It's beyond my, my, my understanding. But I would go there and experience the life that they are living on the street. You know, stay with them, see what they do. I remember... <laughs> when I had my first performance. And I, I mean, it was very secret. It was like something that comes from the heart. And, uh, you know, I didn't share with the professional group that I was dancing with, you know, because I, I didn't know what, what was going to be their response. Because people, they always look at the, their image when they're in the public. Like if you hang out with the people who are from the streets, what are people going to say to us now as a group that is known, in, you know, in, in the city and stuff like that. But I'm not saying that's what they were going to say. But I kept it secret because I didn't want any, you know, conflict with between the group and me. Anyways, I remember when I was performing at uh, the Deb in July. Be before the Deb in July became what it, what it is right now, it's now become it's it's like more of a corporate thing than a community thing, you know. So you get an opportunity to perform live at the beach, and there's people who come from swimming. They have their families, and they watch you performing and stuff like that. So we're giving it a platform <laughs> to perform. And this one guy who was um, a, 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 um, a, a, a street kid, and um, he loved dancing. And you know, because they 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 had they were smoking glue, they were sniffing glue or smoking glue. 
you know so they were not fit enough to perform on a big stage and stuff like that because they were they were smoking glue because of the stress that they have while they are living in the streets and this guy uh we came on stage and it was on stage and we performed and we performed and when 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 this guy was supposed to go on stage and perform he came and he came with like tremendous um energy and and you know like you know saying doing this and, and doing this gesture so showing that he's gonna do an, an amazing performance and the, the crowd was like cheering i was like ah because they know him from around from the streets you know they see him daily and when they saw him on stage it was like so amazing and then next thing he got exhausted from from going around on stage and you know you know pumping up getting ready to perform he got exhausted from that before he even do his performance <laughs> so he sat down and was like he <sighs> was he was tired already but there was a lesson for him that if i continue to smoke glue i won't be able to perform so i need to reduce smoking glue because at that moment it was it what was making them it was like a party life for them because they didn't have the lot that we had to go to the club and dance and you know um, get a few drinks if you wanted to so smoking glue was the life was a, a, like a, a, a club life for them as street kids you know so i was spending time with them sometimes i wouldn't come back home and spend my in my entire night with them in the streets maybe if i have like 10 bucks would buy bread we you know we'd share a piece of bread together and you know it, it was so amazing and they were very talented they were smart they had, they were speaking like fluent english than me i learned speaking english from them also because how i learned to speak english is you know from speaking to people having conversations with people and like i said earlier on i would tell I'll be able to be like, oh, this is how you pronounce this word. I've seen it on the book before, but I didn't know how to pronounce it. So this is how you say it. Okay, okay, cool. I'm not going to tell you, but, I, you know, lesson taken, you know, thank you. Thank you so much, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, it was so amazing. They are, they were talented more than the people who had homes, who had family, who had parents and, and all these kind of things like food and, and, and et cetera. So, so, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, um part of the things that made dance to beijing um you know be something that is 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 in my heart and there were other people who were you know famous local dancers and they were part of dance to beijing and they travel and they were coming to me and saying oh my god amazing experience that i've never had before like you know there's a lot of things about dance be to to beijing that would take the entire week if i were to talk about it but yeah i hope i answered your question yes absolutely Wow. So I wanted to ask, um, as far as things that you can talk about, things that are not too private. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> well, <laughs> is there any, like, what's the biggest challenge you feel you've overcome to get to where you are right now? Because I know you've overcome a lot of challenges in your life. Oh, my God. I have to pick from, like, 20,000 challenges and maybe choose something that will assist someone who's watching at home um something that will give them a fuel a fuel to keep going um yeah i think it's it's self-doubt you know when you're doubting yourself and you're thinking what you are doing is not right you know because i'm a spiritual person again this has to do with it's I, I'm more of a spiritual than, a, than a, you know, an, an actual human being. So I have to refer this to a spiritual realm so it's going to make sense. But if you understand things that happens in the spirit, because I believe, I for one believe that everything that happens here on the physical, it happens in the spirit before it comes here. You know, so if you doubting yourself... And you think this is not gonna work. This is not gonna work. This is not gonna work. You 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 have a goal. You have a vision, but you're not working on it because you think it's not gonna work. You know. I learned to tell myself that if it's not gonna work, so what? 
I will find out by doing it to see if it's not going to work or not, you know. Yes, there will be people who are going to come to you and tell you a lot of things, you know. But if you do it, then that's when you're going to find the reality if it works or it doesn't work. Because we are all different. My, uh, um, um, Damon, you might try to compose a certain music. You might try to perform in the beach. It might not work for you. But when I try to do it, it might work for me, you know. So I always urge people, after learning from these experiences and challenges, as you asked, from here in, at, at the Global Sunday, that don't, you know, make decisions according to what you heard from people. You know, if they tell you this doesn't work, say, okay, thank you for the heads up. Now I know I will expect that it might not work, but I will do it so I can experience that, okay, this doesn't work. You know, and then whenever I tell my child or whenever I am among a group that I have to educate, I will talk about something that I know from experience, not something that I read from the book, not something that I, I, I learned from hearing from somebody else. So I would urge everybody out there who is watching that if you hear anything from somebody, take that, that knowledge and use it efficiently. Try it and experience it. So you talk about something that you know, rather than something that you heard from somebody else or you read from some, you know, books that are available out there. So that's what that, that's what I learned um, um, from this show. That's what the, that 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 was the the most hard part for me because I would be like, okay, somebody said this is not going to work, so I'm not going to do it. You know, so I, I look at my list and I was like, I'm ending up canceling a lot of things because of what people are saying. That's not healthy. How about I try it? Maybe they might have done it in a wrong way. You know, let me try it my way and then experience and see if it really doesn't work or it's because the people that are telling me they, they did it in a wrong way. And then I realized that, you know, we are different and it might not work for you, but, you know, it might work for me, you know, so. Whatever you're thinking of today, even if you are thinking of building a new phone that has never existed in the entire world, go for it. Because if it didn't work for your, for your brother, for your, for your mother, for your, your, for your friend or your, your, your boss who works at the phone company, I promise you it might work for you. So try it. Don't hesitate. Don't listen, do listen to what people are saying and be aware of it. Expect it. But don't restrict yourself. Try it. Try it out. It might work for you. Go for it. Don't don't limit yourself. I'm just gonna keep quiet because I will keep talking until tomorrow. So <laughs> well, that that you know that reminds me. In 1985, um, I had to take work for nine months, and I worked with a a, a corporation that has something to do with uh, computers. Um, they're called IBM, and um, I went to them when I, for the first day I was there, I said, okay, I have a problem and I don't understand there. We have a fax machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the fax machine can receive the fax and do, you know, what it does. Um, and then I have a copy machine and I can put a thing in and copy it, you know, and they said, oh no, that's not IBM, that's Xerox. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but it's a copy machine. All right. And then I have a printer that's connected to my, my, um, I had a, it was a typewriter that printed out what you typed back then. Mm -hmm. And I said, why can't you put a fax machine and a copy machine and a printer all together? They're basically doing the same thing as, oh, no, 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 that's impossible. It could never work. And so I gave up. I should have done it. <laughs> I should have done it. Yes. Okay. So um, instead of asking you a question, mm -hmm. um, I think that the best way that I could possibly embarrass you is I have something I want to say to you. All right. Oh my God. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Lungani. Happy birthday 
to you. Woo! Happy birthday Woo! to you, everybody. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday. Lungani. Happy birthday. A very happy birthday. Happy to birthday you. to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm glad it's. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All I tried right. to stop in C. I wasn't sure if I did. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have done. Uh, there's a song I do in G. It's Boogie Boogie. Uh, <laughs> it's called Chase Away Your Middle Aged Blues, but we won't do that. This is a family show. Uh, All right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really amazing that um, when you sing me a happy birthday, uh, it reminds me of uh, what happened yesterday when I went out. So we went out yesterday with my friends, um, you know, um, uh, Michael, Ash, and, um, you know, um, um, Dakota, and, and them, a lot of them. And I have, I have a scratch here on my arm because I was getting a lot of hugs from people, you know, and, <laughs> you know, it was, it, it was so amazing. And, and, and as a dancer, you know, when you are an, an, an artist, wherever you appear, the atmosphere changes, you know. So I was dancing and performing for people and people were giving me endless hugs. And I showed Michael, I was like, look, look at this. And he was like, oh, what happened? I was like, it's from the hugs from people. They were like coming and <laughs> hugging me and like, bro, we appreciate you. We appreciate what you do. I'm like, how do you even know what you, what I do? I mean, like, we see your show every week, you know. I'm like, oh my God. I was like, <laughs> uh, it was... You know, it was, it was so amazing. It was so amazing. Um, yeah, it just came into my mind as as you were singing a, a happy birthday for me, and uh, as as Damien was playing, um, I really appreciate it. It feels like, uh, come on, guys, this is too much. Now you're making me feel like I'm gonna die or something. What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with you? This is too much. I've never seen this even on the president. Maybe it might be happening in his private life. But I have never seen it before, you know. Uh, anyways, let me keep quiet. Guys, this is your show. Please uh, go on. Well, go that, on. We've, all had, we've each had our two. Yep. What would you like for your birthday on your show? Oh, what would I like? Oh, my God. That's a very, okay, that's a very tough one for me. Because um, the show is... The show is not my show. The show is, 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 you know, people's show, you know. So I think, I, I feel it would be unfair for me, you know, to say what I want. But I think it would be so amazing to hear from people who are watching what they would like to see on the show. Because honestly, you know, I want to see Global Sunday in South Africa where we have people who are hosting like I am or people who are directing like I am or people who are hosting like you guys are right now. Um, like a strong panel from Durban, which can maybe broadcast on a Saturday, you know, when I'm just sleeping and I wake up and I get a notification that the show is on in, in, in South Africa. You know, that's what I want to see. People doing what they want to do and being themselves in the public, expressing themselves in the public and being original on that tick that's what i want to see that's that's i don't care even if i don't get a platform to 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 you know question or host Celine Dion there's people out there there's people out there who want to be heard and as that dream is fulfilled then i'm done i'm done with the global sunday i can move on and do some other things that I want to do in life, you know? So, yeah, I mean, if somebody, anybody is watching, you know, in back in South Africa or anywhere in the entire world and they want to develop Global Sunday in their country, because I remember when we first had um, David Pike from, from Australia, he was very emotional and talking about how how much they need this in, in his country because he feels like, 
everybody else is doing their own thing. They don't share any of their experiences. They don't have a platform where they can talk about their journey. Because everybody wants to know how you got there, Mr. Laden. You didn't just become an international director of the Margot Fontaine. You started somewhere. And obviously, we want to hear about the challenges that you came you came across. And we want to know how you overcame those challenges. Because that's the most important thing. You know, how you got there, okay, fine. I mean, where you are right now, yeah, it's fine. But the, the most important thing is the journey. The journey, how you got there. You always talk about that during the dance classes, Mr. Laden, that it's not about the final position of the movement, it's, but it's about how you get to that movement, the in-between from point A to the last point where it's like the last picture of the movement that you are doing. The most important part is the journey, how you get there. That's when people, you know, that's where the people will mostly appreciate how did you see how he did that jump, you know, how he started the jump, how we, how he was, you know, getting there and taking us on a journey with him or her, you know, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's really amazing. I learned a lot from the training that I have here in America from the Margot Fontaine Academy of Ballet. And when I get back to South Africa, I'll be, I will be 10 times more than what I used to be when I was in South Africa. You know, fortunately and unfortunately, I don't know, you know, so, so I don't know, you judge for yourself if, 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 if that's an, uh, you know, a good thing. <laughs> Anyways, let me, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we will end the show soon. So I'm going to let you guys uh, take over. Please, please go for it. So, um, we do have a second news segment and I think that maybe we can go into that since you, you know, Everybody out there watching, what Lungani just asked you was to please, you know, write in, do a, 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 a box note. What do you call it? An inbox? Uh, <laughs> a text? A comment? Um, make a, write a comment. Um, send something on WhatsApp. Um, all I know of the WhatsApp number, it starts with plus two seven and ends with seven seven, but there's some <laughs> other numbers in between. Um, but um, plus two what, seven seven nine six seven three four zero seven seven. That's my WhatsApp number. Oh my God, that was a <laughs> lovely voice. <laughs> and why don't we go to the second news segment while you all think of what you want on this show? And also, you know, Lungani's laid down laid down the glove. What other countries? Where will we have? this global Sunday show coming from. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every country on earth should have it. I know every we, artist. I know we are going to be having one in, in, in Germany because we have people. I know we mm -hmm. are going to be having one in Australia because we have David Pike and he did explain the importance of this show, you know, art, artists expressing themselves and engaging and, you know, being able to talk about their journey without being rushed and be like, oh, we have to go to the news. Like, talk quickly. You have two minutes to say your biography. How can you explain your biography when you are more than 30 years old or more than 20 years old? How can you explain your biography in two minutes? It just doesn't make sense for me. I'm not trying, I'm not, I'm not trying to crush other people out there who are giving the platform. Things are different and we are different. And, you know, that's what it is, you know. Anyways, let me keep quiet before I, I, I mess up. <laughs> okay, yeah. so yeah. let's go to the second segment of the news. Excellent. Okay. Um, in the second segment of the news, uh, we there's a, a lot of problem in the world. Um, you heard a little bit about the fact that there, there are vaccines that are expiring um, and all of that. So there's a protest in Greece. There's an terrible, terrible famine in Ethiopia. And I know some of you watching are going to want to contribute, going to want to do something. And the part of the problem of the famine is that there are millions of tons of food that have been sent that are not being allowed to get distributed because this famine is intentional. Um, we've also got French forces in Mali running into all kinds of problems. And then there is also some good news in this second segment. So again, from Adaderana Studio 24 in Colombo, Sri Lanka, here is the second segment of the news today.
strike protest in central Athens against the new labor bill proposed by the Greek Conservative government. Thousands of Greeks took to the streets of Athens on Thursday. They were protesting against a new labor bill that has caused months of unrest. Critics see it as a plot to introduce longer working hours. Dimitris Koutsoubas is leader of the Greek Communist Party. The workers have the final say. The youth, who if they realize their power, they can destroy this bill and send this bill to the trash bin where it belongs. So they will not live a lifetime of being slaves of the 21st century. The government says the new measures are needed to replace antiquated laws. Those rules date from a pre-internet era when most workers clopped on at offices and factories at the same time. The new bill would create a digital work card to monitor hours. That would allow people to work 10 hours one day and then fewer hours on another day. But unions say it could enable employers to force people into longer hours and avoid paying overtime. Thursday's protests sparked travel chaos in the capital. Ferry services were disrupted at Piraeus port, flights were rescheduled at Athens airport and public transport was disrupted. Ethiopia's conflict-torn region Tigray is now under dangerous famine conditions. However, leaders deny any such situations, claiming aid has been provided. Adana Muez's uncle says the 14-year-old used to be as strong as a lion. But having spent months hiding in a cave to escape violence in Ethiopia's Tigray region, he weighs less than 15 kilograms, or under two and a half stone. An analysis by United Nations agencies and aid groups estimates some 350,000 people in the conflict-torn region are in famine conditions. Adana's uncle, Tadesse Aragari, says they hid in the cave for more than three months. Famine has been declared twice in the last decade. In Somalia in 2011 and South Sudan in 2017. For famine to be officially declared, at least 20% of the population must be suffering extreme food shortages, with one in three children acutely malnourished and two people out of every 10,000 dying daily from starvation or from malnutrition and disease. The Ethiopian government disputes the analysis from the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, or IPC. It says food shortages are not severe and aid is being delivered. War broke out in November between federal forces and the rebellious Tigray People's Liberation Front. On Wednesday, the UN spokesperson to the Secretary General, Stefan Dujaric, said there had been reports of humanitarian movement being denied and the looting and confiscation of humanitarian assets and supplies by parties to the conflict. Of the accessible areas, the situation is dire. He said several areas of Tigray remain inaccessible. The level of food insecurity and malnutrition are at alarming levels. At a hospital in Adigrat, Adana struggles to breathe. He weighs a third of the normal weight for a boy his age. His uncle says Adana hoped to grow up and achieve a good life, but that due to a lack of food, he is where he is now. We have some good news for you. In a revolutionary effort to beat the ever-present tropical disease dengue, scientists have come up with a brand new species of mosquitoes hoping to beat the illness. They still bite. But research shows lab-grown mosquitoes are fighting deadly dengue fever that they would normally be spreading. The mosquitoes in this Rio de Janeiro laboratory are being infected with a bacteria called Warbacca. The bacteria competes with dengue fever in mosquito cells and so reduces the insect's ability to spread the virus. Warbacca is a remarkable little bacteria that's really ubiquitous in, in, uh, across many insect species it wasn't naturally found in this mosquito that spreads dengue. And what our program did was um, generate um, a stable infection in that mosquito and, and demonstrate that when the mosquito has this bacteria, it's much more resistant to getting a dengue virus infection. Dengue infections appear to be dropping fast in communities that are buzzing with the specially bred mosquitoes. 
According to a recent experiment in Indonesia, cases of the fever were reduced by 77% in areas where they were introduced. Dengue is commonly known as breakbone fever because it causes severe pain in muscles and bones. Explosive outbreaks can overwhelm hospitals. In 1970, only nine countries had faced severe dengue outbreaks. Now, up to 40 million people are infected every year. French President Emmanuel Macron announced a drawing down of French forces battling Islamist militants in Mali in the troubled Sahel region of Africa during a wide-ranging press conference. France's operation battling jihadist militants in the Sahel region of West Africa is to come to an end. President Emmanuel Macron making that announcement on Thursday Bonjour. and saying that French troops will instead operate as part of broader international efforts in the region. Referring to the 5,100 strong Barkhane counter-terrorism force, Macron said the time has come to begin a deep transformation of our military presence in the Sahel. C'est impossible. Ou alors c'est un travail sans fin. The former colonial power has claimed some success against militants in recent months. But the situation remains extremely fragile and, with no apparent end in sight, Paris has grown frustrated. Some 55 soldiers have died since France first intervened in 2013. Political turmoil has also been a concern. The troop reduction decision comes just days after Malian army colonel Asimi Goita took power after overthrowing his second president in nine months. Earlier on Thursday, French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian was in Ivory Coast cutting the ribbon on a new counter-terrorism academy. He said the International Academy for the Fight Against Terrorism in Abidjan would help regional states step up their military, security and judicial cooperation. Macron said details of the changes would be finalised by the end of June. That's after consultations with the United States, European nations involved in the region and the five Sahel countries, Mali, Niger, Chad, Burkina Faso and Mauritania. Welcome back. Um, thank you for, for staying with us in this show. Um, and now my uh, co-host today is Damon Easton. Um, and Damon, you mentioned your new um, comic book, but people don't know about you yet, um, unless they saw that first show you're on. Talk a little bit about you, your, your history, and then also this new comic book. And what does it mean for you as an artist to be moving from the kind of art you have done in the past into this new form? Thanks, yeah. Um, well, I've always done a lot of different kinds of arts. Um, I, I was trained in, in um, drawing and painting when I was a kid, and, as well as acting, and I've done a lot of acting um, in addition to music, which, is, which has been my main thing. Um, I got a master's in music composition at the Longy School of Music in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And um, I, a couple of years ago, 2019, released uh, my album, The Dark Corners. I've released a couple albums before that, but this is really my, uh, this is the one I'm really proud of and I like to, to promote. Uh, so the album, The Dark Corners, um, that can be found on Spotify, uh, just under my name, Damon Easton, D-A-M-E-N-E-A-S-T-O-N. And um, Bandcamp, uh, you can find some of my art music recordings on Bandcamp as well. Um, and Dark Corners is available pretty much everywhere online. You can, Apple Music, um, CD Baby. And, um, and then I've been a music teacher for some time too, uh, teaching at Portland State University and teaching privately. I teach keyboard lessons. I try to focus on improvisation and composition and songwriting um, with my students. And um, so recently I have started with uh, a comic book series. I, I had the idea for the story I wanted to tell and I was pretty sure I wanted to do it through a comic book slash graphic novel thing. Um, a few years ago I had it and I've been working on it for a few years, but especially when COVID hit, I really started just putting all my energy into it. 
and uh, was going to use another artist, but decided I would start working on my art again and and do it. And I'm really happy, really, uh, that I did that and how the art is coming along. And so right now there's an Instagram page for it. There's going to be a website and a Patreon pretty soon. The Instagram page, um, the name of it is the name of the comic series. It's called Under the Clouds Summit. And that's just at Under the Clouds Summit um, on Instagram. And just all, all one word, like Instagram names typically are. And um, it's a big fantasy series. It's got like medieval magical aesthetic. It also has steampunk aesthetic. There's a lot of things going on in it. Um, so you can check out some of the early art there, some of the panels that are finished. And I post new stuff as I, as I create it. And uh, pretty soon there'll be a website where it can be found as a web comic before we eventually print it. And uh, there will be a Patreon set up pretty soon too uh, to, to support it and help it keep it going. But right now the Instagram is where it can be checked out and where you can find information about what else is going on. Um, so as far as switching to that and what it's meant for me, I mean, it's all, it's all the same. It's all creative expression. It's just the question of what medium is the right one for what you have to express right now. And so that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, I, I teach a, a, a writer's workshop and um, what, what we do is everybody has a piece of paper and they write down the subject or their idea. And then we pass it one, you know, one over. And then everybody reads that and they think, okay, you know, what is the, who is the person? What kind of people would you be talking to with this message? Then we pass it again. The next question is, what language do they speak? And then it's, what is the best way to get this message out? Is it a bumper sticker? Is it a meme? Is it writing it on the bathroom wall? Is it a novel? Is it a journalism story? And we go all the way around the, the table so that, and we you know specify it. And so, yes, as an artist, expression and expression hitting home is the goal. And so all the arts are the same. Um, what are the what kind of subject matter is this? this exploring in terms of the comic? Um, well, there's a lot to it. Uh, it has to do with, um, <clears throat> I became very interested in the subject of hunter-gatherer peoples and civilization and the history of civilizations um, and the stages from hunter-gatherers to um, what is eventually civilization and agriculture and um, issues around the sustainability of civilization. And this comic book is exploring all those things as well as um, spiritual uh spiritual subjects spiritual questions um i guess that's about as much there's, there's a lot of themes to sell some of the themes is to spoil is to spoil the comic and and reveal right. it too early but uh that that's what i'll say at this point as far as the theme yeah, well, i know I, I didn't want to do any spoiler but it's just just so people know you know what 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 kind of thing is being expressed um these days everybody has access to everything and so it's good to know where they can find something that they would be interested in. Uh, what I can say personally to the viewers is that um, every single thing that I am aware of that Damon has ever created in art is something that is well worth the time and the experience of participating in as the recipient of the expression. Um, and so I'm very excited. Of course, we've talked a lot about the you know the development of the story and you've shown me some of the the graphics, um, it's its really something, people. You got to go to that Instagram page and sign up or whatever you do on Instagram. I, I don't even know. Thank you. And and uh, my co-host, uh, Mr. Ludden, what, what uh, do you have to share? Well, um, you know, this time in, in COVID lockdown has been really instructional. First of all, um, I, before getting the vaccine, you know, I'm, I'm in the age group that's the most vulnerable and my medical history is such that I'm very vulnerable. So, um, you know, I, I had a long illness before and at one point it looked like the illness was going to take me. And, um, you know, it makes you think about what you leave behind, what you're doing. You know, are you doing something that's going to just evaporate with when the sun comes out or is it it's going to be something that actually lasts and um there are many many things that i started i i have a, a lot to do i'm i'm in charge of a lot of things 
And COVID gave me a chance to really go back through the entire curriculum and syllabus of the Fontaine Academy system um, and really refine it. And it's been, it's been a blessing as, as horrible as it is for the world. And I'm not saying that people getting sick is a blessing. I'm saying that having had to stay home is a blessing. The other thing is, you know, I've been traveling internationally on my own since I was 14 years old and that has never stopped. Okay. And I'm 68 now. So what is that? 54 years I've been traveling constantly. Um, I always dreamed of being able to just stay home, you know, stay with loved ones, be there, do the mundane things, you know, clean up the kitchen, cook meals, sit around and talk. I am, it, that has also been a blessing for me. Um, it's not a blessing because I am separated from some of my children um, and, um, and my mother who is ailing, but just to be home, to be home, to have time to spend with my family that is here has been great. As far as going into the future, we are about to reopen. The Academy closed in, 19, in 2017 because of a change in laws in the state of New York. And I won't get into the, the weeds of that, but it was something that made almost all of the arts institutions, unless they were very old and very, very well funded, um, close, including the New York City Opera, which had been a leading opera company in the world for 80 years. They had to close their doors because of these new laws. At any rate, we had to find a new home. But unfortunately, 2018 was the 50th year of me teaching ballet. And 2019 was the 100th anniversary of Margot Fontaine's birth. So I traveled without stopping for two years. And um, and so this time in COVID, we are finally able to start getting ready to reopen the academy here in Prescott, Arizona. Now, in the meantime, one of the things that I was able to do in COVID was really develop our programs in South Africa, in Durban, where Margot Fontaine opened a school called the Margot Fontaine Secondary School in 1975. 1963, she went and she found out that only white people could attend her performance. She refused to perform unless blacks could as well. And she overturned an entire legal system. And she, she made it so that during the day she performed for the black people and at night she performed the white people, but she would not do the white concert unless there was a black concert that day. And, um, and she fell in love with Africa. She fell in love with African people. Um, and uh, so she bought land and she left an endowment and funded a school that's been running since 1975. We, uh, as I said earlier, Langani spearheaded the bringing of our academy to South Africa. So those are combining. So we, in this COVID time, we've developed our school in New Zealand, Christchurch, New Zealand, Durban, um, South Africa, Riga, Latvia, as well as um, Zagreb, Croatia, and in Fukuoka, Japan. Um, so that's a lot going on. And at the same time, we're, we're continuing our projects that are in England and France, as well as in the United States. So we're gonna be reopening. There will be auditions worldwide. Um, if people want information about that, write to mfab.org. That's M-F-A-B.org. Stands for Margo Fontaine Academy of Ballet. Send us an email or go on the, the website and register as somebody to get onto our list. We will be having worldwide auditions. We are renovating a new um, structure. So there's a lot coming, a lot coming. Um, and But the reason we're all here today is Lungani. Lungani, his birthday, his third years of life, um, and his accomplishments with this show. And so I want to, to say a very, very personal thank you to Lungani. And also um, because of our family relationship, I am, I'm very, very proud of you, son. Um, you, you've done something incredible yet again. And I know there is so much more to come.
We want to also acknowledge um, Miss Classic, Queen of Global Sunday, um, who was not able to be here today, David Pike, who is from Australia, he is traveling today, couldn't be here, and then people Tafel, who is in Germany working on an unbelievable new podcast series, wait till you see it. It's going to be a real boop, 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 boo, or whatever you guys say. Um, anyway, um, I want to shout out to you all. Wish you could have been here to celebrate um, Langani. We will have a private roast of Langani at a time that we make sure all of you can be there. Um, so prepare your embarrassing stories of Langani. And that will not be to the public. If anybody in the public does want to come and attend that, um, $100,000 a ticket. We'll fund the next 10 years. So Lungani, we're going to, Damon and I are going to say happy birthday and good night. And we're going to let you take everybody out and have the final word in this birthday show for you. Happy birthday. Um, thank you so much. I do have a, a caller. Um, I do have um, someone on the line. And uh, this uh, this person is really uh, special because she has been following the show since the show started like Wonderful. a year ago she was there and you know um i mean it's really amazing that i have her on the line right now and i'm gonna be talking to her and um and maybe she has something to say to us and i also have something to say to her but um, let us all welcome um, Udumi. Udumi, hello, you are live uh, on the Global Sunday. Wow, thank you so much for inviting me, my friend. And happy, happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, wait, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to exaggerate here, but I have a question. When did you mm -hmm. start? When, when did you start following? Maybe I might be lying and saying you, maybe you started following the Global S Sunday when it started. Maybe, you know, it's a different story. So when did you start following the Global Sunday? And maybe is there a moment that you remember that you can share with us? <laughs> I'm really sorry to put you on the spotlight, but um, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. But yeah, I started, I mean, uh, in those times when it started, and then that's when I started following and mm. I kept on coming online and checking out what's happening and mm. following you on your Facebook as well, looking at what you're doing, you know, mm. um, uh, exercises and stuff. Mm. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So um, is there any specific thing that, thing that you remember? Well, it's okay today for today because it's my birthday. I will allow, even if it, even if it's embarrassing thing for me. But is there a thing that you remember <laughs> that happened during the show back in the days that you're like, oh my god, Lungani, what happened? Or you didn't even notice anything that went wrong? <laughs> well, I never noticed anything I was wrong. Like really, because I I just enjoyed watching and seeing what you're doing. You know, with mm. your wigs on and stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I, I really never um, saw anything mm. embarrassing. I actually loved everything. I'm like, it's different, you know, mm. and you're promoting also local artists, mm. which is really, really commendable. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. So now, OK, um, two, two, two questions. Last two questions before we move on. Um, so now from okay. where, from when you started watching the show to now. Um, mm -hmm. do you, what, what, what's the difference? Do you, are you observing any difference between when the show started and, and, and now the current show? Yeah. Like the growth. Oh my goodness. It just really went up there. Wow. I, I'm, I'm seeing growth. Like each and every time when I come in view, I'm like, sure. It's actually growing. Wow. It's growing, and I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of everything that you're doing. Wow, wow. Thank you so much. Guess what? I have a certification. Yeah. I have a certification that is being sent to South Africa to you um, as um, a special what? follower, a special supporter of the Global Sunday. Uh, there, is a, there is a certification for you that will arrive in South Africa, Durban, um, tomorrow, which is Monday for me. I don't know if it's 
you know, Saturday for you or <laughs> or Thursday for you. It's also Monday. Remember, I think we are. Uh, what are we behind you guys or we are no you are you guys are behind us yes. i think it's during the day now there right yes yes it's during the day yeah yeah we in the day. evening so it's about 11 past 11 yeah mm-hmm. to, t- to 12 so now we are actually 10 hours 11 hours apart so we are in front now we like midnight almost yeah, you midnight. guys are running you you guys are running like cheetahs you are cheating we enjoy the you day and you guys want to go sleep. Like chameleons. <laughs> so thank you so much for being an amazing supporter of the show. Um, we have uh, the certification and it's going to arrive in Durban tomorrow. Uh, if you want to pick it up, you can pick it up at um, 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 Durban uh, Clermont Tourism Offices in, in, in Clermont. Um, or you can give us your address and we can send it to your address. We really appreci- appreciate you and we love you as the Global Sunday. Thank you so much for your consistency and for your, for your support. Thank you so much for giving us, or for, for serving us on Sundays. It's really amazing. And keep it up. Thank you so uh, much. And more for, content in the future. More and, content. And, and quickly, for people who want to know a little bit about you, I'm sorry, I'm taking over from my um, fellow uh, hosts who are supposed to be taking <laughs> the day. Um, you know, in, in, so you know, so you know, you never give me a, a chance to, you know, to talk because I, I uh, like, you know, I talk and, and stuff. But anyways, for people who want to get in contact with you and for people who want to know what you do, um, can you please quickly share with the people because we're about to end the show right now. Can you please share with people what you do and maybe if there is any bookings involved or any um, uh, anything, just talk to the people quickly, please, uh, Dumi. Okay, thank you so much for this opportunity. Okay, I am a dancer. I also choreograph. Wow. I deal with um, Afrofusion, but again, I do African I specifically, I love African, but Afrofusion, of course, and contemporary. So, yeah, I've been teaching kids in schools, and we also have a festival that runs every September in the Free State. So it started in 2012, so it's really been growing all these years. So we teach kids, we teach youth, dance, and drama, also poetry. So, yeah, that's basically what I do. And I also perform. I just don't teach. I also perf- I love performing. I love traveling and working with communities, especially uh, un- pre- um, underprivileged, you understand? So I would yes. go to the smallest towns and then we teach them and then we do a production. And then we'll bring other um, theater houses like Pecos and or we'll also ask our friends who has lights and sound and we we'll go to that community hall and then we... Turn into, we turn it into theater and then we give them theater. We show them that this is how we do lighting, this is how we do sound, and then we teach them as well, you know, and then we hire youth in that, com- speci- um, that community and then create jobs for them. And then for that month, we'll be working in that community. Like we travel to provinces as well, so that's what we do. Wow. You know what? I'm not going to comment right now. But I do okay. want to know how can people reach you? I mean, because this is so amazing. What you are doing is so amazing. And it's one of the Thank things you. that makes me so emotional that each and every time there's anyone that, that is connected to this show is a person who is doing something uh, profound for the community. So before yeah. I get too emotional, because we have to close the show now, we have to end the show. But where can people find you? Are you available on Facebook? Are you available on Instagram? WhatsApp number or phone call or bookings, uh, you know, information? Oh, yeah. My my Facebook is Dumi Sharon Mukondo. Dumi Sharon Mukondo. And my Instagram is tombs underscore 90. Mm-hmm. And then, I know, you will give them my number. 
if <laughs> they want my numbers, you have my numbers. I'll give everybody so, yeah. your number. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. I'm not gonna give out the numbers. So that's I'm, it's reach. I'm reachable on Facebook and Instagram. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. And um, yeah, thank you so much. And since I know now you're a dancer, I'm really looking forward to inviting you to um, the festival that we're planning here in the US. And I'll really, really, awesome. really be awesome to have you here, um, you know, to perform I, or to come I with the group. I would appreciate it. Wow. Thank you Definitely. so, so much. That was uh, Utumi, um, our lovely supporter. There is there is other supporters that we cannot, uh, you know, call right now because it's late for South Africa. And also we are out of time and I need to hand over to our um host for today so that they, i don't get fired <laughs> i don't get fired in my show by them because um today it's you know it's my day but it's uh, it's their day so i would hand over to damon and um and mr laden please um, um you know take take over take over thank you so much uh, to me thank you bye bye go ahead damon Oh, well, thanks everybody for tuning in today. It's been a real pleasure to host this show and to celebrate Lungani, to celebrate his birthday, celebrate again the show having been on a year now. Um, it's a really amazing time and it's been my honor and uh, pleasure to be with you today. And uh, from me, uh, Mr. Kenneth Ludden, thank you very, very much for your loyalty, for your presence here today and for your future participation and so for all, from all of us at Global, the Global Sunday, we say have a wonderful week and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, uh, Damon. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ladin. I had the best birthday ever. Um, yeah. Um, thank you so much. Uh, David Pike says happy birthday on the comments here on, uh, on Facebook. Um, uh, Mel Bleezy, Mel Bleezy, uh, Mel Bleezy, uh, Gaba says happy birthday. Uh, Malumez, um, more uh, life, more blessings, brother. Um, just to be fair and just, you know, to, to read the comments from people who are watching. I know we have been <laughs> ignoring people who are watching. It's not about you guys today. Every day is all about you, but today is not, uh, it's not about you. It's about me. <laughs> but yeah, let me just say... Um, uh, someone is saying thank you uh, for the words of wisdom um that is wait um i i can't uh, thank you for the word of wisdom and um well and we'll research well research news indeed global sunday is the best place to be oh wow that's amazing um who else is there um tabi i see you and uh oh hang on a second i'm trying to okay anyways um next week is another day is another day another day um another week another global sunday uh day so um yeah i'll be able to say shout out to everybody that um, made the day possible that made me feel so special i really appreciate it. by the way i have some you know, some presents that I need to open up today. So if you can excuse me, I gotta go. Any last words? Any last words? My, I, well, I want you guys to close the show, not me, not me. Any last words? And I'm just gonna, you know, mute my microphone. I'm not gonna say anything. And then when you guys are done, it's over. It's the end of the show. Go for it, please. <laughs> Damon. Thanks. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. And thank you for me and for everybody here. We will see you next week. Have a great, great week. Goodbye from me. Thank you for watching. We'll look, look forward to seeing you next week. Damon? Everyone. Bye bye. Hello.